Hello! Today we are going to run through usage of the Acronis bootable media, or sometimes called rescue media. Bootable media is what is used in a situation where a machine is no longer able to boot, you're suffering from hardware failure, and you've replaced the hardware and need to get the machine back up and running, or you're needing to restore to a completely different machine utilizing the Acronis Universal Restore. This video does not cover creation of the bootable media. There's various different ways to, to create the media or access the media. This is functionality in the media once you have the machine booted from it. In this case, we have a machine booted. Uh, if needed, I can come in and configure network settings. Uh, so if we need to reach out to a network share for recovery or some similar type option, I can come in here and set those settings up. In my case, DHCP is being used in my environment, so I don't need to change anything. You can also register this machine depending on the version of Acronis CyberProtect you are using, whether it be our cloud-hosted version or our on-premise version. It can be registered to a management server with a specific name to be controlled from that, that specific management console. In this use case, we're going to manage the machine locally, meaning that we want to do the operations directly on the machine itself. Once I'm inside, depending again on the version of the bootable media you have, you may see different options inside of here. We'll start with recovery. Recovery is the most straightforward. You would choose what data you want to restore. In this case, we're going to go out and access the network share. So I can come in and say, let's go to a network folder. If I open this, if I browse to other locations, I can see those. Um, otherwise, I can enter in the pathway for that location here, which I will do now. To access the network share, you can enter in the pathway. In this case, I'm using an IP address. Host name does also work. You can hit the little green arrow. That'll force it to try and communicate with that. So in this case, I can come in and say, enter my credentials. Hit OK on my credentials. That then allows me to access the NAS. So in this case, I can see this is a network share that I have. If I open that up, it's going to actually read that share and show me what subfolders are underneath there. I'll give this just a moment as it's working through the NAS. So inside of here now, I can see I've got backup folders inside of here, um, and I've got Two different folders. If I select a location that does not have backups, it will tell you, hey, there's no locations or there's no backups inside of here. I can come underneath backups and hit OK. This then will give you a list of all of the backups located in that location by their host name. So I can see I've got various different backups located inside of here. Um, I can come down and pick the specific backup that I want. If I expand this, I can actually see the individual recovery points. So in this case, there's one backup inside of here. Other options. From here, I can hide the archives. That opens up the contents of the backup. In most cases, it defaults to the volumes. I recommend using disk, especially if you're doing a full machine recovery as it simplifies the process. Instead of having to go and select individual machines or individual volumes, you can just select the entire disk and hit OK. But we do give you the option of doing volumes, files, or that disk level. For this, we're going to go ahead and do disk. So I'll select there's one disk in this backup. That's the backup that I want to restore. After I select that, you'll see here it's auto-populated for me. So in this case, I have recovered disk one, two, dot, dot, dot. In this case, it's picked up disk one on the machine itself. Now, if there's multiple locations, I could come in and choose. Um, so there's disk one. I could also, if this went to the wrong location, choose to clear all. That then gives me the option to go through and restore. I can see, hey, there's a virtual disk here. I can hit OK, and it would automatically recover that. The OK button then lights up and allowing me to do the restore. There are other options underneath the recovery options, such as you know, validating or how are we handling errors. In most cases, you don't need to change any of those. Since this machine is still functional, I'm not going to go ahead and do a restore today, but I'll cancel out of that. Now let's do a scenario where we were recovering to completely different hardware, uh, dissimilar hardware. So you would go through and run the recovery process like normal. I normally, depending on the operating system, would then recommend to try and reboot the machine and see if it boots. Modern operating systems are a lot more hardware agnostic, meaning that they can work on a large array of different hardware. If you run into a situation where the machine is not bootable, you get a blue screen, similar type situation, that's where Universal Restore comes in. Now, once you've done the restore, you do not need to run the restore again. The data is there on the disk. We just need to make it bootable for the new hardware. So that's where Apply Universal Restore comes in. Here you can see it's selecting or picking up the operating system that I have installed on the disk or that's been recovered to the disk. And then there's two steps here at the bottom that we need to go through. The automatic driver search, which in this case can search removable media or a specific folder. Um, this is going to be searching for three specific drivers. That's going to be the HAL or the chipset. 
It's going to be the network controller and it's also going to be the storage controller. Uh, those drivers do need to be in a raw state. They cannot be zipped. They cannot be in an executable. They need to be in a dot INF. There's multiple different ways to get those drivers into that state so we can access them. When you go to add a folder, you can go directly to a network share or you can go locally. So same kind of ideas how we found the discovered the backup. I can go in and browse if I come underneath, for example, um, here's my NAS again. If I had drivers in this location, we do search subfolders. So it is a recursive search. I mean, you can just point us to a, the root directory and we'll go through and find those. The bottom option is the override. Now, in most cases, this is specifying specific drivers for mass storage controllers, such as RAID controllers or fiber channel adapters. You can put any driver inside of here. So again, it needs to be in a .inf state. This is just overriding our automatic search. If I was to hit OK here, that will go through and fix machine bootability, inject the drivers into the operating system, and hopefully get you back to a running state. Universal Restore, as I mentioned, can be used at any time. You can load the machine directly from our boot media and then just choose Apply Universal Restore. Um, recovery as well, um, depending on where you get the media, that allows you to do that disk recovery. Hopefully this gives you a little bit of help in using our, our rescue media, our bootable media. If there's any questions, please reach out to your sales department and have a good day.